Start recording there. When we start recording start. here. Da -da -da. You wanted the best online sports book? That's easy. It's mybookie.ag. They got the easiest website layout, the best odds, amazing customer service, and payouts in only two business days. Check out mybookie.ag for yourself and then sign up using promo code WCE50 for a 50% deposit bonus. That's mybookie.ag, promo code WCE50. I'm Gary Seegers. Catch me on Twitter at GaryWCE. And I'm Chris Giannini. Follow me at Chris B. Giannini. And this is the Winning Cures Everything podcast from winningcureseverything.com. Before we get started, please subscribe to the podcast, share it, and review it. We cannot stress how important those reviews are for iTunes rankings, so help us out. Those of us who love this sport live for nights like this. You are looking live at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Can you believe it? It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. 40, 40 years. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This is Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What up, what up? The day after Valentine's edition of the show. This is Winning Cures Everything, number 195. Thursday, February 15th. Chris, how are you? I'm doing well, sir. How are you? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. Looks like we've already got some people in on Facebook. That is a good thing. If you are watching on Facebook or Periscope or YouTube or listening to the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, etc., Help us out, share it, retweet it, etc. on social media. Make sure to subscribe to and review the podcast on iTunes, etc. You guys know how that works. On today's show, we're going to talk about Ole Miss finally putting in their appeal for the NCAA Bowl Band. We're going to talk about uh, SEC Valentine's Poetry. I'm going to read a little bit to you, see what you think. All right, I like a little poetry. We're going to discuss SEC Basketball, because it is right in the middle of basketball season. Um... We're going to talk about which SEC teams have more NCAA tournament wins than bowl game wins this decade. Okay. Always interesting. And we'll close out. We're going to talk about NFL broadcasting their draft on Fox for the next five years and the fact that Fox may be getting ESPN's wildcard playoff game and what that means for ESPN. Along with that, the NFL announced the finalist cities to host the draft for 2019 and 2020. We'll talk about all that stuff. First, how was Valentine's Day? Valentine's Day was nice, so the wife and I did Valentine's on Sunday and uh, due to work and things like that for her, so I went to the Grizzlies game last night with a buddy. <laughs> well, that sounds like fun. That sounds yeah, like fun, I right? totally so ignored it, my family. It, tell me, it, so you did dinner and, and all that good stuff for for Valentine's Day. Where'd y'all go? What'd you do? Did you cook? No, I didn't cook. We we went out to eat. We Intended to go to our one of our favorite restaurants in Memphis here. It's uh, the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah. Off Kirby. Really, really great place. Loved it. This is going to maybe get some backlash. One of the things I really am just starting to hate about living in the South is crap being closed on Sundays. Like, I get Chick-fil-A. Look, they're a franchise. They're nationally known. I get it. But outside of the South, you just don't have this option. So we pull up to Brooklyn Bridge, and apparently all the years I've been going there, I've never gone on a Sunday. They're closed on Sundays. How insane is that? Now, I, I'll tell you this. There I, are, I get like family-owned, and they want to spend Sundays with family, and it's a religious thing, and I, I understand it. You own a business, and I want to eat it. Yeah. like here's oh, So, so family-owned businesses, a lot of them will close on, like, Monday. Right? Yes, yes. Because it's not exactly a busy day. Correct. There are but, a ton that close on Mondays. Right. So that I can understand. I don't understand closing on Sunday. If you're a it's restaurant. Still, yeah, it's depends still part on what, of the your, what your business is. But if, yeah, if you cater to people on the weekend, that's a lot of revenue. And it, it frustrated me. So we ended up just pulling into P.F. Chang's. It was really close to there. It's a place we like to eat. It's a chain. I don't I, – I tried to – we try to do a lot more local stuff. Did you see where there was a news channel, and I forget where it was, that actually called the uh, the city in South Korea, P.F. Chang's? It's like... Oh, yeah, yeah. It was it, on it? the... Like P.O. Chang yeah. or P. whatever it is that, yeah. that it's called, it's just and they called it P.F. Chang's. Chang's. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Somebody tried to use voice uh, whatever. They tried to send that from their phone, I guarantee it. And it was just auto-corrected. No, no doubt yep. in my mind that was just an auto-correct. 
<laughs> That's phenomenal. But it was fine. It was nice, you know. We um simple. So we had Freddy's steak burgers on Tuesday night. Okay. I love, and that was I our do, I love Freddy's. That was our Valentine's Day. Listen, Freddy's good. Last night, uh, we made some quesadillas here at the house. My daughter had a bunch of homework. Uh, wife and I did, you know, some work and whatnot, and then we sat right here and watched Netflix. That's good. And we're getting old, man. Well, Listen, see, you that's love your thing. wife every day. It, I, I remember one of the first Valentines that I had with her. She drove up from Mobile. She was living in Mobile, teaching high school, and I was working. Uh, I worked at Methodist, I think, at the time. Um, but I was working up here, and I had dinner and everything set up for her when she got here. And I was living in a different house at the time. Obviously, we've gotten married and bought a house and whatnot since then. Um, but I set up like a, a white table dinner and candles. and we. But I got her favorite foods. So I went and got her sushi from her favorite place up here. And I got her uh, a cherry limeade to drink with. <laughs> there you go. Hey, but man. it was a nice little romantic thing. And now it's like. All right, well, the kids got to do this, and we like we worked all hey. day. We got to, so it's it's a lot different now than it used to be. That's right. A lot. It doesn't different. mean you don't love her anymore. It no, doesn't mean no. you don't do special times throughout the no, year. This is what I'm she not, appreciated. I'm not giving in to marketing and paying outrageous prices for stuff. No. once a year, just do that stuff all the time. Exactly. It's it's a lot easier if you just do it all the time. That's right. Like obviously, you hit them up on day. like a random Thursday. Yeah. Man, it's going to mean a lot more than just oh, yeah. Valentine's Day. Well, it's it, taking them to a movie during the week or what? It just some night when it's like chill and easier, That's right. and you don't have to fight crowds and all that. Oh, those but young still, guys out there dating, you got to put in the work. Yeah, you still got to do, do that. It. Sorry, you got to you still got to deal with it. But once you get married, it's all good. That's right. It is all good. All right. So, <laughs> old Mrs. Valentine's Day was spent finalizing the press release about their appeal of the NCAA's bowl ban for this coming season. Now it was filed on February fifth. We didn't know about it, otherwise I would have nope. talked about it. Yep. Uh, Barrett Salee wrote a very informative summary over at, uh, over at CBSSports.com. So let me, let me read some of this, all right? Okay. Uh, the school argues that the NCAA's penalties, specifically the 2018 postseason ban and a limitation on unofficial recruiting visits, are inconsistent with similar cases in which lack of institutional control was found. The school said the COI, the Committee of Infractions, uh, our own infra uh, infractions, abused its discretion, departed from precedent, committed procedural errors, and reached factual conclusions inconsistent with the evidence. So basically they're saying like, yo, they messed up a lot of crap here, yeah. right? I don't know that I agree with that, but, you know, whatever. Uh, a postseason ban is an extraordinarily severe penalty, the school wrote in its appeal. And more importantly, not all postseason bans are created equal. As I would agree with that. As was explained to the COI at the university's hearing, the imposition of a one-year postseason ban on an institution's football program in the SEC results in a financial penalty of at least $4 million. Correct. A second postseason ban uh, doubles this amount, resulting in a total minimum financial penalty to the university of $8 million. Now, the school further explains the deep financial impact the payout incurs on the football program by explaining how it fits within the current budget. And I'll talk about this in a minute. Uh, in fact, the actual penalty each year is $8 million, with half of that amount to be returned if, after five years, the university has no more serious NCAA rules violations, the school wrote. In other words, in terms of cash flow, the $8 million penalty associated with each postseason ban effectively deprives the university of almost half of the football program's $17 million annual budget for two successive years, a total cash flow shortage of $16 million. According to the Jackson Clarion Ledger, the NCAA Committee on Infractions has 30 days from the date of submittal, February 5th, to file its response, and the school has 14 days from that point to file a rebuttal. I don't know that going at this from a financial aspect was the smartest way to go about it. No, I think they broke the financials down. See, I didn't take it that way at all. They went at it from a precedent standpoint. Yeah. If, if other cases have been just like ours are very similar to ours, and you penalized this away, I would like to know why we got penalized substantially harsher than those other programs that had the exact same type of violations and process and all that stuff. And that's a, that's a question that deserves answering. And I, I do agree with that. Um, I, mean, I, I told you long ago I thought this was petty. And on both sides, I yeah. thought Hugh Freeze made this thing really petty, and he got slapped on the wrist, which really pisses me off. 
but Ole Miss gets hammered. And at the end of the day, we used to hold the coaches accountable, and now we're just holding schools accountable. Yeah, which is just so we're not holding the coaches accountable at all, and we're crushing the schools. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Now, I I will say this. Um, One thing that the NCAA is trying to get away from is schools self-imposing their own penalties. Oh, well, but and they've been talking it? about that for hang on, right? If a school self imposes an appropriate penalty, is that not acceptable? Because at the end of the day, the penalty is still the same. So that's a pride thing. Then they're openly saying, "I don't want to penalize you what you're owed. I want to be the one to make you suffer." Yeah, wouldn't a self imposition say these guys acknowledge what they've done? They know they're about to get hammered with this huge investigation, all this other stuff, but they're going to go ahead and take this penalty, which is a huge financial hit. Yeah. I think that's appropriate. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And if you say, no, I want to be the one to bring the hammer down, then that's just a pride issue. The NCAA is completely in the wrong in that situation. I look at it a little bit differently. And and Ben on Facebook says it's just Ole Miss. What's the big deal? Well, it, it's an SEC school, and this is one of the, the top programs in the country. Like, it, they, they bring in a ton of revenue every yeah. year, and, and that puts them in the upper echelon of programs, regardless of the fact that it is, you know, by name, Ole Miss, yeah. right? So, um, But financially, I, this, fi- this Financially, hurts yes, it, it definitely hurts, but you can't go at it this way when you've got other programs that are – not Power Five that pull in so much less, right? Seventeen million dollars for this program, but and those I, I, I other understand. schools don't cost as much. You can't say you cannot say. Well, Toledo only has a budget of three million dollars, and they're able to survive. So you should be able to survive on. No, seven. no, I'm not saying that they should Toledo be able to survive. Toledo doesn't have the, the expenses I'm that Ole Miss has. Ole Miss is still going to pull in forty some odd million dollars from the SEC network. The NCAA cannot touch that, right? Yeah. All true. the NCAA can touch is the bowl revenue. The bowl money. That's it. Yeah. All of this other stuff, all the apparel sales, all the ticket sales, all of their own licensing deals and whatnot with. Uh, with, I think it's Learfield Sports is who they're with, uh, or IMG Sport, whatever it is. Everybody else, yes. All They've the other got, revenue streams. They have other things. But to, to come at this, this way, I understand what they're trying to do. I don't know that it's going to get them very far. Well, I don't think it's going to get them very far. Like, I, I think if it they just went based on precedent, it, bra- it, like if they just talked about precedent, then that's one thing. But to bring in the financial stuff, it, it starts well, no, to sound like a pity party. Well, no, but if to, they have to bring some type of argument to the table as to why the money hurts them. Because here's the thing, the the allowing players to transfer yeah. because of the extra bowl ban, that, they can't get that back. And that's what sucks. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, I, I actually think they have a legitimate claim here. I think they have a legitimate case here. And the fact that the NCAA... Kind of made it clear, well, well, we don't like that you did a self-imposed one year, and we probably would have only done one year, but you now, did a self-imposed I don't know that they would have only done one year. It's, the, just, bull, the reason it's that, just bull crap. What they're trying to do, the NCAA is, like, obviously, by, by only giving Hugh Freeze that little bit that he got, what they are trying to do is snuff out the booster culture at Ole Miss. And the only way to hit them is to hit them there. I just you can't, can't believe you're not going to hammer the coach that was responsible for it, too. I, I agree. But it, obviously, I he's not been able to be hired by anybody in the SEC. We talked about this before. But Greg that Sankey is, that doesn't is blacklisting That's, that is, But that is irrelevant. I'm, because I'm nobody else will touch him doesn't mean that two-game suspension is appropriate. No, that's absolutely not appropriate. I'm, when you've I'm got you. Barney Farrar and these other guys that were literally just mules – they were workhorses for the process, and they are banned for what it will, in essence, be a death penalty. What, what it lets me they know is Hugh Freeze back. covered his tracks insanely well, right? The the atmosphere of compliance and all that kind of mess. And Barney helped him. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. helped him with his NCAA response. Rather than dragging Hugh Freeze under the bus like he should have done, like, right. like Hugh and the rest of them did to him. That's right. He absolutely should have gone after him. He knew everything that was going on. He told us to do this. That it, but the problem is none of them flipped on Hugh. Nope. All of them said he did preach an atmosphere of compliance. He did tell us to do all this stuff. We just went rogue. Like, 
All you've got is somebody's word in this case. You don't have subpoenas. You don't have all that in an NCAA case. Yeah. So it it's I get it. But you've got all this investigation, and you've got all this other stuff. I mean, you don't have a whole lot of information on Rick Pitino, but hell, they 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 popped him. Oh yeah, and so, and he's suing them for like forty million dollars, and it'll school. never go. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He, he's suing Louisville because Louisville quote technically yeah. didn't have grounds to fire grounds him. to fire him. But look, find, I'll tell you find, this: find a jury of twelve people to find you find you in 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 favor of that. Yeah. Uh, Good luck. It, off topic. Let's let's hit something I didn't put on the the list. Pete Thamel came out and said, and and other people have talked about this. I listened to uh, Chris Vernon today for a little while. You know the Chris Vernon show with the Grizzlies and whatnot. Um, he talked about somebody that has a buddy in the FBI. Okay. Told him a long time ago, and this all has to do with the college basketball stuff, right? So since since you brought up Patino, um, he brought up. That the the little bit that we saw, like the ten cases that were, you know, uh, accountants and Adidas guys, like shoe guys, and like a few assistant coaches here and there, like that is just the tip of the iceberg. And there are a lot of people that seem to think that when March Madness hits, is when all of this stuff is going to go. Haywire. Do you Pete, think that's that's the FBI or the people doing this investigation just being dicks? Why would they wait till March Madness? Probably that to be an ass. I'd believe that. That's so ridiculous. To I me. agree with you. I, I mean, if, if so they wanted to wait until after, we're talking then... about the FBI here. So they have criminals that we're going to allow to continue their criminal activity just just so they can. Be an ass and make a show of themselves. It, it doesn't make much sense to me either. I understand where you're coming from, but I, you know, I mean, I I'm understand these guys aren't murderers, and so we're not allowing them on the street to murder other people. But like, evident, if the FBI is involved, this is this is government it, resources, yeah, it should, this well, is tax I'm, dollars, federal tax dollars, yeah, being spent to investigate. Well, and, college, and that's the thing: you have to have everything like laid sports. out perfectly in order to actually indict somebody oh no right? i know that in yes. order to have charges that. yeah because you i mean you criminal defense yep. well yeah yep. i mean it's so you get it but uh but pete thamel came out today and said that uh it from his sources this is going to take out multiple hall of fame coaches it's going to take out lottery picks it's going to take out blue blood programs like we're it's not yep. just like three or four programs like we are looking at my question it, is, is, the, the is it only in basketball? A source within the NCAA said that this will alter the sport of college basketball See, that's what bothers forever. Me. That's what bothers me is they're focusing on one sport, and there's another sport that is larger than that could ever Well, the be. issue is that college basketball is there's, – there's less players. College basketball brings in millions, tens yeah. of millions of dollars. To the NCAA. College football brings in – Billions with a B, not necessarily to the NCAA. I don't give a shit. I'm talking. It about It brings money. it into the schools. I, I, money generated through the FBI does not care about any of that. The FBI I, cares about with money. You. They're following the money. I, I'm totally with you. I completely agree with what you're saying. But um, until we figure out that that something is going on with college football that that has to do with shoe companies or or whatever. Because, like, a football player signing with Nike or whatever, it's, it ain't the same deal. Like, basketball players sell shoes, period. You ever seen a, a Derrick Henry shoe? You ever seen a Marcus Mary or a Tom no, Brady shoe? No, but they, they, like, sign, they still sign deals. They sign deals, but Johnny they Manziel are not. still got a Nike deal. The, the they second are he not, graduated college, they are not went into for the draft. nearly the same amount of money. It is completely different. It did, but it, like, you know it is. It doesn't matter. It's still, it's still you're allowing. Anyway, I wish they'd, I wish they'd take football down. <laughs> I can, uh, I can understand that. I can understand that. Um, let's, uh, let's move on. Let's, let's talk about some SEC Valentines. And I, I just want to read these and, and right, just, read just off. to get you laughing a little bit. All right, read them off. Uh, this is on SEC Country. It's okay. fantastic. Uh, so they've got one for every SEC school. Okay. We're going to go through. It's in alphabetical order. All right. Alabama's first. Okay. 
Roses are red. Our trophies are gold. Deal with the dominance. To us, our act never gets old. Yeah, that's really dumb. That's... <laughs> All right, Arkansas. The only reason you wanted to do this was because of that. Now we've got to get no, no, 14 no. of these things. With 13 more. Because of that. No, not because of that. Because all, these are hilarious. Y'all, y'all can thanks Gary for that. Arkansas. Roses are red. The Chad Morris era is here. Chins up, hogs. Pushing past mediocrity is near. Do you believe that? Uh, do I believe it or do I like the the crappy poem? Both. I do think the. Chad Morris is going to be a really good coach. I wish he was my coach. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'd take him. I'd take him right now. Uh, all right, all right. I, I think the I think the the rhyme is a little weak and cheap, but go ahead, go ahead. I'm not a writer, so. K- KB on Facebook said Tom Brady has signature kids. God, KB, <laughs> you, be careful, sir. You, I believe that. I believe that he got, he got British Knights, like the light up shoes. You know what I'm talking about? You remember those? <laughs> Uh, Auburn, roses are red, violets are blue. We lost to the real champs, but we beat Bama too. I like that one. I like <laughs> That's that one. Ridiculous. I like that one. Uh, let's see. Florida, roses are red. Jim McElwain is gone. Dan Mullen brings hope. What can go wrong? A lot. A I've, whole I've, lot. I've watched Cousin Eddie coach for a long time. <laughs> a lot. Uh, Georgia, roses are red. Gator fans are blue. Our recruiting class rocks. To the SEC East, we're better than you. That's factually correct. Yes, it absolutely is. Uh, Kentucky roses are red. Everyone here wears blue. We don't know if Mark Stoops is the guy. How about you? It's probably I'll, I'll go incredibly with that. accurate. Incredibly accurate. <laughs> incredibly Surprised accurate. Surprised they didn't go with a basketball themed one. Uh, I think all these are football. Okay. These are all football. Uh, LSU roses are red. Ed Orgeron's voice is a marvel. We need an offense. To have any chance at survival, all of that's factually correct. Do you like it, or does yeah. it hurt a little bit? It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt anymore. It's it like hurt. I'm I'm so numb to this by now. We'll see. I mean, I got to give them the year. <laughs> yeah, year. So, <laughs> uh, Chris on on Facebook said uh said Tom's got Uggs too. He does have Uggs. He's got Uggs. It, that's Where's that's not a Nike Uggs? thing, but you know, it's, it's a, good. <laughs> How many NBA players have have Uggs deals? <laughs> NBA players? I yeah. bet a lot of them do. You think so? You see the way some of these guys dress? Yeah, I could absolutely see like Russell Westbrook. Yeah, have you seen that dude most dresses of these guys so dresses? goofy, man? Yeah, don't Ugh. don't criticize John Tom's dressing, okay? Good gracious, that's that's the best dressed man in sports. You see that guy in some of those black tie affairs? Oh yeah, no, you're right, Brother. you're right. Uh, Cameron says, uh, "Hail State, let's go." God. Let's go. We're about to get to We're about to get to state's little roses Mi- Mississippi are red. State. Roses are red. Our cowbells never rust. Dan Mullen who in Joe Moorehead we trust. Best coach in the history of y'all's program. You're going to say Dan Mullen who? Y'all should be loving that man. Y'all should be telling him thank you. Don't tell him thank you. <laughs> Give him the middle finger. Give him the business. Missouri. Roses are red. Truman's tail looks black and yellow. Drew Locke wears backpacks better than Texas fellows. I have no idea what any of that is. I don't know any of those inside jokes. Truman about. is uh, is is the mascot, right? Okay. And I then didn't, I didn't know that. And then I Drew Locke, of course, the quarterback. I know, I know Drew. Uh, isn't he? He's from Texas, isn't he? What's the backpack? That's just weird. I don't really know what any of that crap means. I, that, was, it, that was really dumb. It, thanks a lot, Missouri. That was dumb. Uh, th- this is why y'all don't belong in this pull, conference. Pull, <laughs> pulling us down again, Missouri. Made us look bad. That's terrible. Terrible. Roses are red. Hugh Freeze was fired. Made too many phone calls. Will he ever be hired? I hope not. I got a hundred dollar bet out there that it won't be. That's the uh, that's the Ole Miss thing. Wait for how long? Four years. Four years. Yeah, you gonna was, lose that? Wait, not hired he gonna, as a head I coach. Thought he was gonna get. No, any coach. I thought he was going to get hammered. If he got like a two-year so calls, and he'd be in the NFL, and I'd win that thing. So you you made the bet before the oh yeah I made okay. I made the bet before he got fired. Dang! I don't know, you know me. I put my money where my mouth is. Yeah, you definitely I do lose that a lot. 
South Carolina, roses are red. Jake Bentley is a star. Keep doubting us, haters. Will Muschamp will take us far. I love that one. That's you know, you know, right. I love South Carolina. Though. Oh yeah, I'm drinking the Kool Aid. Oh yeah, hey, it's, he's already ben, up to the uh, the talent there Jake in Bentley just a couple a of years. Uh, Tennessee roses are red. We despise orange and blue. If Butch isn't off the video board soon, someone should sue. Well, he's he's gone. <laughs> he gone. <laughs> Texas A&M, roses are red, our cash is green. Jimbo Fisher will be worth the bread if he makes rivals scream. I'd like to see them do well. They, I would, I, too. I, okay. And they flaunt their money. Oh, they they definitely do that. Good gracious, they do that. If I had that kind of money, I'd flaunt it, too. Finally, the last one, Vanderbilt. Roses are red. After Obama beat down, we were black and blue. Who wants the tide? Not me or you. <laughs> That's about what happened to them this, this year. This is exactly why you want to do this. Is because you got to start off talking about Alabama. No, this has nothing to do with And then you got to finish talking about to Alabama. This. I wanted to do it because it was Valentine's Day yesterday, and I thought these were clever. Uh, some had of them were clever. nothing to do. It always comes back to Alabama. It's got nothing to do with Alabama. It doesn't. Nothing to do. Okay. Nothing okay. to do. All right. Let's talk about uh, some SEC basketball right quick. Okay. Um. Ole Miss and Andy Kennedy parted ways. Uh, now, you don't watch a ton of basketball, although this weekend I'm going to give you a little bit of homework. homework. I've kept up with basketball a little bit. Um, yes, he's, he's, I know – listen, I know this. I know Andy Kennedy kept saying – when he was, he was bad in the tad pad, and he kept saying, wait till we get these new facilities. Oh, it's going to be so much yeah. better. They got all them new facilities, and he didn't show up. No, it, it hadn't been – it hadn't been any better. I would and, have put, and he, his, he, I put his butt back in the tab pad for this year. Yeah, this year was – this is pretty bad. This yeah. is really bad. Markel Crawford transferred from Memphis for this. Yeah. Like, it's – they're they're not good this year. But he, I will he say this. to go. Uh, he only made the NCAA tournament two times, but during Kennedy's 12 years in Oxford, uh, the only schools with more wins than him were Kentucky and Florida. That's pretty good company. Yeah, but that's just because he built up a bunch of wins early. I don't. I mean, the last he he made an in, uh, an NCAA tournament um, three years ago. Was it three years ago? Well, it wasn't last year. It ain't gonna be this year. It was. It was two years ago. Two well, years. If you're ago. not counting. It this was. Year. It was like it, this year was, was almost after, over. So when are we gonna start counting this year? Let's see. Uh, Chris on Facebook said uh, a church in Greenville, Mississippi, hired uh, Mr. Freeze and his wife to speak March fourth. I may attend. Chris, you're going to have to give me an update on that. You you need to hit me up and let me know what's going on because I'm curious to hear. We're, I'm, we're going to lose viewers if I keep talking, so just <laughs> go on with yourself. Anyway, uh, back, back over to basketball. Like I said, the only schools with more wins were Kentucky and Florida. And he, he made his two NCAA tournaments with Marshall Henderson and then after that, right? So, like, he's done pretty well. He never had a record worse than seven and nine in SEC play until this year. This year's been pretty bad. They're, bad. they're four and nine right now. Ole Miss is not a great job, but but they do have a lot of money because of SEC Network and all that good stuff. Um, they got some interesting names that are popping up for this coaching search. Okay, what do you think Memphis fans would feel like? That's how exactly, would they take that's exactly what I would do? If if Penny Hardaway, Penny Hardaway that's, or or that's the list East Tennessee well because you don't know if Penny's going to want to take the job I'm just, but that's the list that's that, who, so you go after him first yep that, so you don't worry about the fact that he's never been a head coach nope nope all right what about East Tennessee Steve Forbes that's the one that I felt like should have gotten now he's a better job anyway. he's going to be a better coach yeah he'll be a better coach like if, if all that's going on and Tubby co- Smith is still the coach of the Tigers next year college if, basketball whew. has become all about players. It's all about talent. It's not about coach. Okay. It used to be about coaching. That's why the same Hall of Fame coaches kept making. Well, no, the I mean, there's still over over something over to over do over with coaching. Again. Obviously, you need the talent, but like coaching does matter absolutely in the in the at the Ole Miss tournament. level to to win a championship. Yes, at the Ole Miss level to make the NCAA tournament on a talent. consistent basis. If you get blue chip talent, you can moonwalk into the tournament. Okay. You hire Penny, you instantly have blue chip talent, and you move oh, yeah. into the tournament every year. I don't, and you make ruffles in the SEC. All Ole Miss would care about is making ruffles in the SEC. 
Yeah, absolutely. That's what they wanted with Andy Kennedy. That's it. Just piss people off in the SEC. Win games in the SEC. I don't believe that I would want Penny Hardaway as a head coach. And here's why. Keith Easterwood talked to me about this. He said, look, this man loves to play golf. He loves to go and hang out and whatnot. If you think that this dude is going to be a grinder, you're wrong. Now, he has pull because of his name, and he'll probably hire some good assistant coaches, but he ain't going to be the one that's out there doing it. And I completely agree with that. Whoa, 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 whoa. He loves all those things now because he's been retired for a long time. That's what retired people do. Yeah. If he took a job like this, do you think he did all those things when he was a player? Or do you think that he worked at his craft unbelievably? He would be making less money as a head coach yes. than what he brings in every year. Yes. But with he his shoe deals he's and not all doing of his it. licensing stuff. He's not stuff. doing it for the money. He's doing it because he's got to help his legacy. What he's doing right now is he is wanting to help kids. That's why he's a high school head coach. I don't. I think the only job that Penny Hardaway would take would be the Memphis job. That's the only job that I believe that he would take. And they should hire him. I I agree with that. They I should. think I think Tubby should be. Probably but if I gone. was Ole Miss and I wanted to instantly get good real quick. You just go get a guy like that because you don't have to rebuild. It's college no. basketball. He would immediately get five blue chip athletes that are all top twenty five players just from Memphis and Olive Branch. See, Ben on Facebook says, uh, "Does Penny have the passion for coaching like he had for playing?" Well, we don't know. If he took the job, I would assume yes. Yeah, that's that's the kicker. If he doesn't take the job, we got the answer. Yeah. If somebody offers him a job and he says no. Then we have the answer to that question. Right. It just it changes everything. But if he accept I can't imagine him accepting the job thinking, well, I'll just half ass this thing. Like it's just not this is not how he is. Now you're you're right. All right, so there are nine teams in the mix right now for for top like SEC NCAA tournament bids. Okay. We think eight of them are gonna get it. Yes. I actually think eight of these teams are gonna make the tournament. The standings right now heading into the final five games, and I put a post up on the website, winningcureseverything.com. Go check it out. Because I, after every round of games, I'm going to put up this whole thing, and we're going to go through the bracket and explain what the SEC tournament will look like and all that good stuff, and we'll do this pretty quick. Uh, the nine teams, Auburn is 11-2, and two, Tennessee number two, they're 9-4, and four, three is Missouri at 8-5, and five, four is Alabama at 8-5. and five. Missouri's got the tiebreaker over Bama. Uh, Florida is also eight and five. Missouri and Alabama both have tiebreakers over Florida. Uh, Arkansas is seven and six. They're number six. Mississippi State, Kentucky, and Texas A and M are all six and seven. And the tiebreaker goes just like that: Mississippi State, Kentucky, and then Texas A and M. That is through nine. And then you've got Georgia and LSU at five and eight each, at ten and eleven. And then the three that are probably not going to do much are sitting back at 4-9. and nine. That's South Carolina, Ole Miss, and Vandy. This is nuts. Between number 11 and number 6, there is two games. There's five games left. And last night, Georgia beats Florida at Florida. Mississippi State loses on the road at Vandy on a last-second shot. You know, Kentucky... A four-game losing streak? Kentucky is 6-7. and seven right now in SEC play. I don't know that John Calipari has ever had a losing record in the SEC. He has. Like, I, this is the first four-game losing streak he's had since 2005 when he was at Memphis. Yep. And that was that was the year of the uh, the Darius Washington missed free throw at the end against uh, Louisville. Like, since then, he has been on top of the world. Even in the NIT year, when they lost Nerlens Noel, like, in the middle of the year, mm-hmm. and they just they tanked, he never lost four in a row. Like this is this is unprecedented stuff, and they've still got like they got Alabama this weekend, you know. And now they got them at home, but Bama's been playing lights out here lately. So the way that the tournament would set up right now, and these are some pretty cool matchups: South Carolina, Ole Miss on Wednesday, along with LSU and Vandy, and then Thursday for the noon game on Thursday, you have Kentucky and Texas A and M. These are two teams that are. Almost guaranteed locks in the NCAA tournament. Correct. That would be number eight and number nine, which blows my mind. Uh, then you've also got uh, South Carolina or Ole Miss against Florida. 
that could be cool because Ole Miss beat Florida earlier in the year. Uh, South Carolina plays everybody tough. Mississippi State and Georgia, also a good game because Georgia ain't that bad, even though the record's not great. Um, and then you've got Vandy and Arkansas. Vandy has been awful this year, but they're still sneaking up and beating people. Um, yeah, see, a Cameron, crushing defeat for my Bulldogs. That's that's one that you had to get on the road for Mississippi State because they're projected right now to go like 20-10. and 10. Yeah. But their non-conference schedule was so weak, and they don't have enough big wins to to get really in the conversation. They're on the bubble. Their RPI is, you know, 55, 56, something like that. Um, but last night did not help. You can't lose to, to Vandy with a losing record and, and still get in there. Uh, so on, on Friday, you'd see Auburn against Kentucky or A&M, Alabama against Florida or Ole Miss or South Carolina, Tennessee against Mississippi State or Georgia, and Missouri against Arkansas or LSU or Vandy. You're going to have basically NCAA tournament games in the SEC tournament. Yes. So long as chalk holds. Yes. Right. Obviously, there will be somebody that sneaks up and beats somebody. Well, because it they're only one or two games apart, yeah. One team wins three games straight or all five and they went out. Yeah. Then, it, then they could go all the way to the top almost. Do you have faith in Auburn to be able to win like the SEC tournament? Yeah. I think they're good. I think they're really good. I, I'm and I think so they, curious. And I think they have the coach to do it. I think Bruce Pearl is that caliber of coach to do it. I heard on another college basketball podcast earlier that there are a lot of people around that program that do not believe Bruce Pearl will be there next year. Nope. I agree with that too. Now, now why do you think that he won't be there? I think whatever these investigations are that happen at Auburn will eventually take him down. You think so? Yep. I think I agree with you. Yep. I completely agree with that. I'll uh, tell you this. So I listened to Tony Kornheiser's show. You know that. Yeah. And he had Pat Forty on. Pat Forty talked about how I was at Auburn the other day, sat in the room in his office with Bruce Pearl and just kind of laughed and said, how are you still here? And he just laughed and said, I dodged bullets, baby. But he you ain't knows be able to dodge him he, for long. That's right. He knows. He knows it's. He knows it's with the FBI thing. I, he can't dodge. I don't think he's going to jail, but I think he will lose his job. So, I believe he, that. But until that happens, he's the second best coach in the SEC. So, so he told he's, forty. He's good. He told forty that I dodge bullets. Yeah. Man, did he know that was on the record? <laughs> no, he don't care. <laughs> what sure he got to go? What does he got to do? How can the NCAA use that against him? How can anybody use that against him? No, you're him? right. You're right. You're 100% right. How are you still here? Man, I'm a survivor. That's – you got you got points. You got the truth. So, I kind of hope he lasts because I like him. I think he's good College for the League. basketball is so much better with him. People can say the same thing about Rick Pitino. They're wrong. They're just wrong. That guy is a grade-A asshole, and nobody likes him. Yeah. The the league is better with guys like Pearl. And Bruce Pearl is And if great. we're talking about he lied about inviting a recruit or a player to a birthday party yeah, barbecue. That, that whole thing. That's ridiculous. This is obscene. Let this guy coach basketball. Now, if he's embezzling money, then we're having a different conversation. But but he obviously but this wasn't ain't about, a part of that. Yeah, this ain't about embezzling money. He's He is so much better for the sport to be a part of it. And it really bothers me that I don't think he's going to be there either which means he won't be in college basketball at all anywhere, and it's going to be bad for the sport. Why I don't like the sport as much anymore is because the guys that I love to watch keep getting taken down by petty stuff or things that they really didn't have things to do with, but they're they're a part of a program, and so they're just going to get swept up in it. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, but it won't just be Pearl. Nope. Oh, it's, no. This is going to be oh, no, massive no, 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 reform. No, 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 no. It won't All be, over here. And, and, and Pat Forty said the same thing on Tony Kornheiser's show that day. He said Dumb. he's talked to people, and he says this is the tip of the iceberg. Um, Cameron says uh, uh, Pearl is a stud. He, he, he is. He absolutely is. That's, and that's he's putting so it li- And he's so likable. That, that's what makes it hard. He well, really he, he is a likable coached at Tennessee. Dude. He was the only team that beat Memphis in that national championship runner-up year, yep. aside from Kansas, uh, in that big number one versus number two game. And Memphis fans wanted to hire the guy even when he was still under NCAA yeah, know, probation. And, and care, I would have hired him. I absolutely would have hired him. Oh, a hundred percent. Like I, I there, there were 
I'm talking diehards that that would have wanted him. He's a they did good coach, him. and he's crazy likable. Oh, and he, he's it's so like his media yeah. presence is crazy. Right? When he, he was on TV programs. those couple of years, he was great. And, and the first thing I would do is hire him to be on TV. As long as he didn't do anything really bad that make you look bad as an organization for being on TV, hire him to be on TV. But it's not it's not the same watching him talk about it. No, it's just not. I want to see him on the sidelines. Damn, we lost Facebook. Yeah, no, we, we back. Yeah, we back. We good. Right. Just you got to give it just a second. Come on now. You got to let it just marinate a little I bit. I don't like technology. It's all about it patience, man. It's like it's like baking a potato. I don't like patience. <laughs> <laughs> throw up right now. All right, let's do this. Does your SEC team have more bowl wins or NCAA tournament wins this decade? Decade. This decade. So Ten you can years. only get one bowl win. Each year. How long ago did they make that run to the Elite Eight? You talking about LSU? Yeah. Let, let's go through them in order. Oh, right? you said your team, so I thought you were that's, asking no, no, me no. my that's, team. No, no, no. I mean, we're going to do every SEC okay. team. Okay, okay. Uh, tell, me, tell me what you think, though. I don't remember. Elite was Eight that, run was would that be... Elite Eight run a decade ago? That was, that was less than a decade ago, right? I don't know that we did then because we've lost a lot of bowl games. Less so, was about five, a little bit better than five hundred in bowl wins, and Ordron just lost his. So which which way are you thinking? I think we have more. You think NCAA you have more tournament NCAA wins. tournament wins because one run you can get like five wins. Well, you I mean you'd have to be a runner up to get to that point, but oh. like Elite Eight would be three. We wins. made it to a bunch of. Well, yeah, yeah, Elite Eight. Time we made it to the NCAA tournament a lot. It was a day and a time where LSU was pretty good at basketball. Oh, I remember this. I remember. I, this John, was a long time ago. John Brady yeah. was uh, was a coach. Final Four yeah. coach. It, it was, it's but that, long, was, that was with Big Baby and everything. Long time. That's what I'm saying. Was that longer than a decade? That's what I don't know. I don't know. Uh, right. Alabama, I knew this right off the yeah, top of the head. No. We hadn't been to the NCAA. T- we, we've been one time in a decade. Yeah. And we lost. And didn't win. And you and so, won a so crap load of bowl games. Nine bowl wins since do, 2008. So now, do you get two wins for the last couple of years where you won national championships? Um, does that count as two bowl wins? Yes. So now you, so you're able to double your bowl win. Based on the everybody else playoff. only plays one game. So you now have two games. Al- Alabama's got five playoff wins yep. in, in four years, which is more than anybody else. Um Arkansas has got four bowl wins and three NCAA tournament wins. See, I would have thought they had more NCAA tournament wins. Auburn? You you Way know what more, Auburn is. More bowl, bowls. Four bowl yeah. wins, zero NCAA yeah. tournament, because they, they haven't even been to the tournament. That's why Bruce like Pearl was such a great hire there. Man, I really hate that this stuff's going to fall down on him. All right, what do you think about Florida? I think they've got more NCAA wins. Absolutely. No question. They 16. Got, they went back-to-back national championships, man. Was that... Was that within a decade ago? See, I'm so my brain is so jacked up. Once you get past three or four years, it might as well have been twenty years ago. I don't. That know. was, uh, I think. Joe Kim Noah was still in. I mean, he, you know. No, I think I think that's so. They made it to within the, the elite eight window? last year. They've been to the final four since then. They, yeah, I mean, they you got go back to back. Wins. You got six wins. Oh, no, here we go, here we That's go. That's 12 wins. Uh, this says, unfortunately, both of Billy Donovan's two consecutive NCAA championships occurred just before this 10-year span started. Oh, so they don't count. But the Gators made it back to the Elite Eight five times okay. in that 10 years. Well, because just the two championships would give you 12 wins. That's crazy right there. Five Elite Eight trips in 10 years? Whew. That's and people are talking about Michael White might leave Florida for Ole Miss. Are you kidding me? No, that one. That's a, that, now it, Gary Parish believes it's a possibility. Well, I don't know what Florida's paying him. Well, I, see, I'm not even worried about the. Um, I'm not even worried about like what he's being paid. I'm wondering if like the change in athletic director, the change in like a possible vision for the uh, for the athletic program. Like, maybe that's something. That's and, what I was thinking about. He played at Ole Miss. He was a, uh, an assistant coach at Ole Miss. He like could. His family is from there. Listen. Excuse me. Florida is historically a really good basketball program. But but we have learned going through the things that we did with the coaching changes that they don't have the greatest facilities. They don't put as much money into programs as you would think being a big boy powerhouse program. Yeah. I could easily see him jumping ship. That shocked me. But because he is an Ole Miss guy. Hey man, it's entirely possible. 
Uh, I think they would have had a better chance to hire him out of Louisiana Tech. Sometimes as opposed Mama to Florida. calls. Yeah, but they didn't have the grounds to fire Kennedy, though. No, nah, not not at that point. He was still making NCAA tournaments at that point. Yeah. Um, Georgia, that's an easy one. More bowl wins. More bowl wins. They've got seven bowl wins. Basketball has zero NCAA tournament wins. Kentucky, that's also an easy one. They got more tournament wins. Uh, 26 tournament wins to one bowl, bowl win. I was about to say, I bet they don't have many bowl wins. No, they, they got one bowl win. LSU. This is the one where I actually think if if the the final four run in because we didn't win a lot of that that was before the ten years that was in the no so, we have more bowl wins um, we have more bowl wins they have five bowl wins they have one yeah NCAA tournament win. so had they made that elite eight run with that one our final four run with that one that would have tied it'd be tied yep um, let's see Cameron says uh, Mississippi State definitely bowl wins. I think so, too, because they yeah. haven't made it in a long time. Six bowl wins and one NCAA tournament win. There was a day in the time where they were an NCAA basketball powerhouse. That was when Rick Stansberry was the coach, and this is this year is the first year that they've actually been competitive yeah. since then. Like, Stansberry... It's been a long time of crap. I remember at one point, and I think it might have been that national championship runner-up season for Memphis... Um, Stansbury had Mississippi State in the tournament, and you had State and Memphis playing in Little Rock in the NCAA tournament in the oh, second round. I do remember round. that, yeah. And it, it was a three-point game, and it was epic. You know what's crazy epic. to me? This is how guys fall off the map. Stansbury was so good for so long, but at the end of it, he was terrible. Like, he coached nobody. He literally well, stood on the it, sidelines and clapped his hand. He was Jason Garrett, man. Well, he, he couldn't uh, – Stansbury couldn't recruit anymore. No. Like, they got busted Like, for, he was – he didn't do any coaching. He just got talent. Oh, he and he was able to get talent, man. But once he Ooh. stopped being able to get talent, he couldn't win at all. I've never seen a dude fall that fast. No. Uh, and, and he picked it up a little bit at um, – oh, Cameron brings up, you think Hallen might be a guy that ends up going down. Adidas did get him the uh, the job. Um, there I'm ain't not, no telling. I'm not making any. I'm not throwing anybody's name out there for the NCAA or FBI stuff because you. There's just no a, way to a, know. We know every program that's competitive is dirty. Yeah, and and because we know that, I'm, I'm not going to start just slinging names out there until they come out with names. I'll comment on it. I'll say it's. It's, it's likely oh, because it's, he it's is possible. super tied in. Now I'll tell you this: if they just handpick all the NCAA, oh, the Adidas schools, I'm going to be pissed. That's not cool. No, but it, because but you, you know you, the other organizations are doing the same thing. You got to be you able just, to catch them. You just didn't have an inside guy of those organizations, and that's just total bull. That I'm literally because that literally would give Nike and and anybody else Under Armour, whatever other schools that are out there, a huge advantage. Well, that's like talking about cops, you know, how it's not fair that they pull over, like, the slowest guy that's speeding as opposed to all the other ones. Like, you know yeah. everybody else is speeding, but, like, you could catch this one. Like, you still have to catch somebody, you know? Like, you can't just not do anything. Just, well, these other ones are doing it worse, right. but we don't have any proof. But you've, so, got, you've, got, you've got resources to catch everybody in this. This is And, not and I'm wondering the if they lines. probably have... I'm wondering if they we'll probably see. have that. We'll, see. well, if they're talking about Hall of Fame coaches, then some of those Nike schools are going down. Oh, yeah. When they talk about Blue Bloods, all the Blue Bloods are Nike schools. Well, not all of them. Like, Kansas is Adidas, you know. Well, UCLA okay. is, uh, what, Under Armour now? Like, Are they? Yeah. They signed, like, a $267 million okay. deal. Crazy money. But I would th when I think of Blue Bloods, I'm thinking of the, the Kentuckys and the North Carolina schools. Kentucky, North Carolina, Indiana, Duke. Duke, all yeah. that. That's That's all, all Nike. All of those are Nike. Yep. And that's, I mean, that's possible. What is Syracuse? Are they Adidas? I don't know that they're a blue blood anymore either. Yeah. I mean, you toss them out there. It's, 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 and that, I mean, they got a Hall of Fame coach. Yeah. Jim Beheim. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Missouri? More NCAA wins, tournament wins. That would be a negative. They've got four football bowl wins in the past decade and only three NCAA tournament wins. Oh, wow. They haven't been to the tournament since 2013, they haven't won a game since reaching the Elite Eight in 2009. When Arkansas took their coach. In 2012. They fell apart. Yeah. In 2012, uh, the Tigers were 30-5. and five. They were seeded number two, and they lost in the first round to number 15 seed Norfolk State. I, I used to love watching them play, though. I oh, love, I, I, I love, love Missouri. Style basketball. Yeah. I love that style basketball. Mike Anderson was, was great yeah. there. And, yeah. and he, had, 
He wanted to go home to Arkansas. That's why I like watching Arkansas play basketball. If I got to watch college basketball, I want to watch that style. Um, Cameron thinks that uh, – he said, I worry about Howland. He had multiple things at uh, UCLA. I pray not because I think we're only a year away from being back in basketball. I mean, you keep getting guys like he's getting – absolutely. I mean, yep. it's a, you know Howland can coach. Oh, no, he can coach. And, and if you got the guys, then absolutely. Yep. Ole Miss. Bowl wins. Absolutely. Five bowl wins to two NCAA tournament wins. I knew Andy, Andy Kennedy took him to the tournament a couple times. And he, he made it to the round of 32 I, both I, times. Yeah, I was about to say, I know he had a couple of wins, but I couldn't remember how many. What do you think about South Carolina? I think that run last year got him more NCAA tournament wins. That would be incorrect. Oh. They have five bowl wins. They have four NCAA tournament wins. All of them came last year. So I remember – Spurrier won a lot of games. He won three New Year's Day bowl games. I don't remember all the bowl games that he won. Multiple Outback you remember, Bowls. Well, no, you know what? Because I knew all three that he won because uh, Clowney never lost a bowl and Clowney never lost to Clemson. Yep. No, you're right. Clowney should go down as one of the greatest college football players to ever play the game. If you look at his stats and how he wrecked college football for three years – you shouldn't penalize him because they never had a quarterback. No, no, you're right. No, that that guy should go down as one of the greatest college football players of all time. Um, he was a freak among freaks. If, if he and Steven Garcia had played together, I think they would have been insanely good. Yeah, you're probably insanely right. Insanely good. God, Garcia just – Because, I mean, think about the the uh, NFL talent, like Alshon Jeffrey – uh, what's the if, kid's name? If he that was, was the, three uh, the years earlier. If he came into to the college three years earlier. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, Tennessee tournament wins. Absolutely, eight tournament wins and three bowl wins. It's Pearl Pearl won a lot. They of they've been to the Sweet Sixteen three times in that span. Uh, one with Quanzo Martin. Mm-hmm. Uh, Quanzo Quanzo. What is it? Quanzo? I think it's Quanzo. He's know. he's at Missouri now. Yeah. Um. It, this this is a little surprising. He, they've been to the Sweet 16 three times in 10 years, uh, and they played a New Year's Day bowl game just twice. They won both of them, though, uh, both of which were under Butch Jones. Surprising, huh? Uh, Texas A&M, what do you think? Bowl wins. Negative. Oh, Five NCAA see. tournament wins, only four bowl wins. I didn't know they... uh, the basketball team reached the Sweet 16 in 2016. Uh, they've won just one bowl game since Johnny Manziel. Uh, won the Peach Bowl or the Chick Fil A Bowl back in uh, 2013 against Duke. You remember how crazy that game was? Yeah. Uh, finally, last one, Vanderbilt. More NCAA tournament wins. That would be incorrect. No way. In 10 years, they have one NCAA tournament win. Man, they used to make it to the tournament every year. Yeah, they got, were like a basketball powerhouse. That was, in the SEC. That was Kevin Stallings' problem, though. Yeah. Oh, they couldn't win the tournament. They couldn't win in the tournament. Damn. They'd get there. Never win though. That was jack up my bracket. The uh, the basketball team Should've went to the NCAA tournament that. six times in ten years. Only survived the opening game once. That yeah. was in twenty twelve. But to say they went all the time. They have won three bowl games in ten years. Can you believe that? No, I mean it's just all bowl wins are not equal. It's about matchups. I, I'm with you. It's I'm with totally you. But like the still, reason the reason Tennessee has three wins. Let's go look at the three teams they play. I bet they're garbage. Are you probably right? I bet they're garbage. Look at all the games, because LSU doesn't have a great record in the bowls, but we always end up playing really tough bowl teams. Yeah, that's, uh, well, yeah, it depends on, on what. It's totally about matchups. It depends on where you're going. It depends on where you're going. And that is why conferences can be terrible all year long. Last year, the Big Ten was a piss-poor conference. They got in the bowl and they smoked everybody. But everybody they played, they were huge favorites over. Well, they a, were lot, a lot of it had to, to do with the fact that they teams. had three teams in uh, uh, New Year's Six bowl games, right? So, like, Wisconsin, yeah. Ohio State, and uh, Penn State. And they were all in big games, and that moved everybody else up a little bit. So, But it just it didn't, just didn't all, help Michigan any, but, you know. No, but it just, it just <laughs> always it always makes them look a lot better. No, you're right. In some of those years, the SEC dominated in bowls. We got matched up against some slaw teams. No, that's – I mean, that's just part of it. You are so right. So, so right. Uh, let's close out the podcast with this. 
The NFL Draft is going to be broadcast on Fox for the next five years, along with the NFL Network and ESPN. On top of that, Fox's new deal for NFL's Thursday Night Football package could net the network an extra playoff game. Have you heard about this? I didn't know they got the extra. I knew they got hey, the well, Thursday They, they haven't deal. gotten it yet. Okay. But uh, according to John Orand of uh, Sports Business Journal. So they'll Business take Journal, the game away from ESPN. Fox stands to pick up a wild card weekend contest as part of its new agreement, likely the one ESPN and ABC have been broadcasting the past four years. Uh, Oran reports that no official decision has been made on whether to award ESPN's playoff game to Fox, but that is a uh, there's a clause in ESPN's deal with the NFL that would allow the league to pull the network's rights. In John's article, he writes, the NFL alluded to the possibility of moving the game in the Thursday night football RFP it sent out late last year. In that document, the league asked broadcasters to bid on a playoff game, though it did not specify whether that game was ESPN's. I don't think there's any doubt. No, 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 no. That would be the one they would lose. Absolutely. NBC ain't losing their game. And CBS and Fox already has one, so it wouldn't make any sense for them to lose the one they got and then get another to, one. To go bid that on would another. Be, that would be stupid. I agree. I agree. CBS ain't losing theirs. The networks are not losing theirs. No. We can call it ABC all you want. But it's, it's ESPN. ESPN. Game. Uh, so back to the NFL draft. ESPN first had this uh, this idea to televise the draft years ago, back when Pete Rozelle was, was still the commissioner. Correct. He, he didn't think anybody would want to watch that crap. He was dead wrong. This Correct. is a huge thing now. Um, in the first few years, like ESPN uh, not necessarily gave up the rights because it's always been the NFL's thing. Uh, three years ago, it was also simulcast on the NFL Network, right? So it's ESPN and NFL Network. Since then, first off, it was a 73-27 split on viewers for ESPN over NFL Network. Two years ago, it was 70-30. Last year, it was 67-33. Now, I can tell you why that number keeps going down, and this year it might actually go back up. You think it's going to go up with Fox broadcasting? Well, no, a Fox broadcast is not going to go up. But if they left it alone, I'm going to tell you, people don't want to listen to John Gruden. I'm telling you, they will watch Monday Night Football because we in America watch football. Yeah. And we don't care who calls it. But you put him as one of the main staples on ESPN for 10 hours while you're watching this thing go through, and he says the same thing about every person. He is the least intellectual person to listen talk about. Well, because this guy every dude is for, great. Everybody's great. Nobody has any flaws. Oh, I love this guy. He's going to be groom grinder. He works this so dude hard. right here he says is the same a dude, thing man. Over and over and over again. I'm sure he's a hell of a coach. He was awful on TV. This guy is awful. a dude, dude. He's I, I, absolutely... I made a point to watch the oh, NFL yeah. Network over ESPN because I refuse to – and that hurt me because I love Chris Berman. Do you think always ESPN, brought Berman back. You think ESPN is going to get out of the uh, the business of the NFL? It looks like the NFL is crapping on ESPN. Um, but it, no, it also never, sounds like – I will tell you, they'll never stop doing the the draft. ESPN? Yeah. Even if Fox has Even, even if Fox brought – they'll still pull 50%. So they lose another 13%. They still got you 50%. You think they'll pull 50%? Yeah. Really? What well, depends on who Fox puts up there because we know Mel Kuyper's name. We know, you know, Todd uh, McShay. Todd McShay. We know all, if they bring Berman back for for the for the thing. Like you know, these guys. We grew up with them, so there's going to be some nostalgia, and there's just going to be some comfort of knowing who these people are. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll agree. To, like I, like, enjoy I Kuiper. listen to the NC uh, the the uh, the NFL Network because I love I love Rich Eisen, and I can listen to that him makes all day long talk about it. But but it's all about who does Fox put up there. Now, if they put Troy Aikman and Joe Buck, that's great. But I don't know that Aikman's going to be doing that. I don't know that Buck's going to be. Who, who's going to be calling it? It all depends on if they're good. Just because you have it doesn't mean does you're good at it. Does not mean that you're good at it. I just wonder with network television and whatnot, I, I wonder. You're going to get a lot of viewers because it's network television, but I don't know that all those viewers are leaving ESPN to go to it. I think you might because be Because right. we also are a creature of habit. You, you are exactly right. All right, and, and finally, Adam Schefter reported that the five finalist cities for the 2019 and 2020 NFL drafts are Nashville, Come on, baby. Cleveland or Canton, Kansas City, Denver, and I wish I had a drum roll. 
Las Vegas. All right. If the Browns get the first pick overall next year, I will be going to the draft at one of those places. The winners are expected to announce at the spring meetings in May. That That's happening. That's I'm going. Going. Whether it, Now, if it's in Nashville, yeah, I'll go with easy. you. Yeah, we'll go. If it's Cleveland, I may not go. If it's in Canton, you need to go. Canton is you need to I, go to I do, Canton one day. I do want to. Uh, it will change your perspective on the NFL. I'm not kidding. It is hallowed <laughs> ground. Cameron jumped in. He said, "Road trip. Come on, <laughs> come on, baby. What are tickets run? I need to figure out what. To, so I where's never that seen this year? to Philly again? Yeah, Philly again. I want to know what I can get a ticket for this year because then it won't be a whole lot different next year, no matter where they have it. What What are the perks for putting this thing in Nashville? You're just getting the South more involved in the draft. It's always been up north. Yeah. It's always been in New York. Then it was in Chicago. Which I think it'd be a lot Midwest. more crazy. And then, oh, yeah, you get the you get this SEC college football atmosphere going on, yeah. which is a little bit wilder than the NFL atmosphere. Oh, absolutely. I know the people in Philadelphia like to swing it like they got something. Well, And, and you so saw have, what it was like when, uh, when the Predators made it to right. the Stanley Cup, that's, right? So people went the, absolutely bananas. And, the South. And, just does football. That was that was they, football. The South does big events. Yeah, better. We just do things differently. Yeah, I don't know that it's better. Listen, some people to me, would say it's, it's better. It's uncouth. Some people would say it's uncivilized. Listen, we're not as sophisticated. It's gonna be a party. Cameron says uh, Canton is amazing. Canton, Cameron came with me. That's where I went for my bachelor party. Is we got married in Cleveland. All the guys we drove down to Canton. Really? Yeah, we drove down to Canton for the day. I did not know that. It's beautiful. I want to go back. I want to go back. That would be a very interesting one. I, I think so holding it at the Hall away. of Fame would be would be a lot of fun. I think that'd be cool. And if it's in Vegas, brother, I'm there. What was the other place I heard? Cleveland, Can- Kansas City, and I'm Denver. not going to Kansas. I'm not going to Denver. That's well. I don't think that either one of those would be good. I mean, it, you'd have if, to hold it indoors. If they get it, I'm not going. Makes sense. Well, I don't if think Cleveland or Canton get it. It's going to have to be that, held what, indoors. What too. cities do you think would actually beat out Nashville for this? I don't know that Cleveland would beat them out unless they're like, hey, you guys are always picking down here. Maybe you'll sell this thing out. Um, I think Canton and I think Vegas. I think those are the two that would take Nashville. If I had to rank it, I would say Canton, Vegas, and and Nashville would be my top three choices. Cameron said, remember the rain delay. Oh, the, the, the baseball game. It was like a nine-hour rain delay. We stayed for the whole thing. They Good. stopped, they stopped selling beer in the second inning. Yeah, uh, Ben on on Facebook says uh, Vegas would Vegas would beat out Nashville. Nashville. Oh yeah, yes, yes. Sir. The only reason I think Canton would beat Vegas out would strictly be because the NFL owns Canton, that and therefore everybody who's buying a ticket to it. I'm going to bet the venues in Vegas are going to get a piece of the ticket. A hundred percent of the money would go to the NFL, NFL in, Canton. in Canton. Yeah. Um. But but because they're pushing the NFL so hard in Vegas, man, that might. That might end up, that might, and they got a yeah. bigger venue because and, and not don't, that big. don't forget, you've got two years, so like yeah. it, they don't have to go to one for two years. Like right. they're they're talking about changing this thing up and going somewhere every year. Cameron also said uh, Grady size more, Chris. Yeah, it was pretty great. Cameron's <laughs> just throwing out a bunch of inside jokes about my bachelor party. Uh, tell me this: if it's held in Nashville, where would you host it? Would you just put the it on Gable Broadway? Center. No, no. Oh, well, I mean, I, I wouldn't put it inside oh, if gotta, I'm in Nashville. Oh no, it's got to be inside. It's got to be inside. Chicago, it wasn't inside in Philly. Yeah, you're right. Chicago, yeah, it'd be I'd put it on Broadway. Broadway, and I'd just close down the street. I don't know if Nashville want to do that. They'd lose. I don't know. They closed down Broadway for everything. CMA Fest last yeah. year, the Stanley Cup stuff. It wasn't even the Stanley Cup. That's right. It was like the, the finals. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It was the yeah, conference you put it, finals. Oh, no, you definitely put it on Broadway. No, you definitely put it on Broadway, that. and you just you you close you down gotta, the street. You got to have an alternative it. place, especially in crazy weather climates. Well, and because it's right there, like just in case it's it's you supposed to the rain Gaylord on Center, you just jump in right the Gaylord there. Center. You're right. That's that's why I was thinking just have it in the Gaylord Center, and then everybody still everything is still on Broadway. Uh, having it outside, I think, is awesome. Like, I, it it just adds such a different effect to it. You know, I see the reason I disagree is because there aren't as many good seats for outside. Every outside venue is not nearly as good as inside venues for people that well, no, want but to if come and if watch. If you're just it. wanting to go and hang out and party and whatnot, but you like, can't just party on Broadway while this thing's going on. 
Well, not, like, but, I ain't going every day. I'll go for round one, and then I'm going to be there the rest of the weekend, but I ain't, I ain't spending the money buying but, but tickets that's the for thing. every day. That's, that's the cool thing about, on Broadway. about having it outside is you show up for what you want to show up for, and then there's bars everywhere. And you can watch off Na- the patio, Nashville would and you also can do have whatever. To be very careful about having it outside. If you have it inside, you control who comes in and what they come in with. Outside, we, we it's are a in crazy. the south. You know what are the over under on if it happens? How many catfish get slung at somebody? Oh, good lord! Just just because it's a redneck thing to do. Now you you entirely right about that. You entirely right about that. Put it inside. You can control some of these things a little better. You you keep it outside. There ain't no telling what's gonna happen. All right, we ran a little bit long, but that's all right. Everybody that's on Facebook and Periscope and, and whatnot. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you guys for chiming in this Still evening. Still download the episode. Absolutely. Go to iTunes, subscribe, review it, uh, give us five stars, all that good stuff. Share it out with your buddies on uh, on Twitter and Facebook. Let everybody know what you're listening to. If Don't... we can ever get to 55 star reviews, we will give another $25 away. Exactly. To exactly. either St. Jude or Labonner. We're Labonner. on 33 right now. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be Labonner this we time. Gave, we, gave, we got 25 quick. Yeah, we gave 25 to, uh, to St. Jude. Hit St. Jude with a check. But Labonner, they're waiting on theirs. So y'all review it, help us out, let us know what's going on. And um, yeah, we'll see you guys, what, on Monday? Or are we doing Sunday? Monday is President's Day. I don't care. I'm good either one. We'll let you guys know when we're going to do it. We'll we'll figure it all out. Um, <laughs> ben said someone's going to snuggle a, or smuggle a catfish in their pants. Oh, yeah. Well, they do it to the Preds games. Absolutely. Happens all the time. All right, you guys. We'll see you the next go-round. Remember, share that thing out. Review and subscribe on iTunes and SoundCloud and all your favorite podcast apps. It's been Winning Cures Everything. Don't forget to check out the website, winningcureseverything.com. It's time for the rundown. Remember, check out winningcureseverything.com. You can give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. You can follow us on Twitter at winningcures. You can follow myself at Gary WCE. You follow me at Chris B. Giannini, C-H-R-I-S-B-G-I-A-N-N-I-N-I. You can also email the show. That's winningcureseverything at gmail.com. And we now have a voicemail line. That number is 551-226-9899. If you want to call and bash us for talking bad about your favorite team, or praise us, or just tell us about how awesome your team is doing, leave us a voicemail. That number again is 551-226-9899, and we may toss it on the show. Thank you for supporting this show, and until next time, have a good one, guys.